So let's talk about relationship connectivity. So we're going deeper now, right? We got past the dating, we're trying to build that deeper connection. So in this section, I'm gonna talk about, I always try to look for pictures that show not tell, these connection breakers. What happens when the relationship just doesn't go anywhere, when it falls apart? You've had a couple of first dates and then something happens. That's what this section is all about. And I call this responsive connection. Do you like how I add my favorite um, adjectives onto these things? So responsive connection is all about responding to their needs so that your needs are being met and their needs are being heard. Ah. Decoding and sending nonverbal cues based on emotional needs. So this is a very different way of, of um, building the connection in the dating process. Typically, when people get into this phase, they're sort of unsure what to do next, and they're not sure where their needs are. They're like, am, are my needs being met? Um, am I meeting their needs? Is this going in the right direction? What should I do next? A lot of shoulds. When we interview people in this section, they talk a lot, I feel like I should move in. We should have that talk. So hopefully we can base this on emotional needs rather than shoulds. Very briefly, let me just talk about the difference between men and women here. So women, when they study women's brains and MRI machines while they read body language, they found that women use on average 14 to 16 different areas of their brain to interpret someone's body language while looking at pictures and videos. Men use four to six. This, this doesn't necessarily mean that men are worse at body language. Now, statistically, men do score a little bit lower on reading body language. But what it means is that we think and we interpret body language incredibly differently. Women see one nonverbal move as very different than a man might. And so that's why in this section I wanted to set up the fact that we just see nonverbal expressions a little bit differently. And the way that we solve this is with responsive listening and responsive connection. So responsive listening, there was a whole study done by Sandy Pentlet at MIT Media Lab, which I talked about, where he researched successful couples, which couples were successful and why. And what he found is this idea of responsive listening. And what he did was he wanted to see, while you're listening, how often do these occur? Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, I get it. Sure, aha, okay, I see. All those uh, back and forth gestures. Now here's what he found, the difference in the sexes. Men, the more short interjections a man made, the more attractive, attractive he was to a woman who was talking. No matter what, it, there was a direct correlation between the more interjections a man made, the, the higher attractive ratings he got. <laughs> Women, sure, <laughs> sure, yes, Jay. <laughs> the more short interjections the woman made, the more she liked the relationship outcome. This is a very different way to think about responsive listening, that when you're talking to someone as a couple, for men, sh saying your engagement with those, uh-huh, yes, I get it, and mirroring facial expressions, is one of the most attractive things you can do. And this starts right from the very beginning, from the moment you say hello, right? It doesn't have to happen later in the date. And for women, when they engage, it also makes them feel like they're having a deeper connection. So their engagement also helps them with their own feelings of being heard and listened to. The second thing that he found was loving nonverbal. What does this exactly mean? What were the, the characteristics of the most loving couples? What did they do the most? And here's what they found. Oh, and couples with more secure attachment styles tend to touch their partner more, laugh more, stare more, and smile more while together. So here are the four for you. Touch, we talked about haptics earlier, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the touch map later. But any kind of physical touch, the more secure the attachment style, the more there was the back and forth touching that happened in the relationship. And this is not sexual touch, this is just physical. Um, fingers to arms, typically, and low back for women. Men will touch the low back. Smiling and laughing. Now, I wanna make a special note here about smiling and laughing. Yes, of course, I want you to smile when you approach her to show her that you're not a threat, or for the guy, for the woman, I want you to show him that you're agreeable and that you wanna smile. But smiling and laughing, they found, was actually um, a camaraderie thing. That when someone was enjoying something, the other person would smile and laugh, mirroring them to show, I'm with you. So that togetherness was a huge oxytocin builder, the smiling and laughing together. So it's both smiling as a non-threat, as well as enjoying each other, enjoying your time together. Intimate and deep gazing, so dropping that gaze down and doing the deep gazing and reading facial expressions. And last one was leaning, 
So those couples leaned in together more frequently. They leaned in as the other person was speaking. And this happened again from the very first date all the way through to mar couples who had been married for many years. They still engage in these behaviors to show, I'm with you. All right, the last aspect of building that connection is how to go deeper. So there are two different ways that you can non-verbally encourage your partner to go deeper. And this can start from the very beginning or the very end. <laughs> Do you like my video demonstrations? Yes. So the first one is nodding. So a slow triple nod was research found that when you do a slow triple nod, people speak three to four times longer. So if you are with a partner and you want them to keep going, you want to encourage them to tell you more, what you can do non-verbally is a slow one, two, three triple nod. Research shows they will speak three to four times longer. So that is something, it's like a non-verbal ellipses, a dot, dot, dot. It's like, please keep going. Now, it's important that it's slow. Watch the difference. If I slow triple nod, tell me more, right? But watch the fast one. This is impatience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So it's very important. And men, I've seen men do this where they're like, please just stop talking. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? So if, if you do want the woman to wrap up quickly, that is a way that you can do it. That fast triple nod, it shows impatience. But if you want to get that deeper connection, let them dig a little bit deeper, that very slow triple nod for both men and women works really well. I have a quick question. Yeah. If we go back to number one. Yes. When, well, it could be the guy saying, uh-huh, yeah. Would you think that he's not really listening? Hmm. So in the study, they did not find that. Hmm. They did not find that the woman, that there was, it, there was direct correlation, no matter how genuine or not they were. The more interjections there were, the better. The more interjections there were, the more attractive the man was. Now, as if a man was trying to be more verbal, right? Trying to show, uh huh, yes, I see, I'm listening. Even just that act of trying, at least he's showing that he's trying to be engaged. So I think even for a woman, that's more attractive because it shows that he's actively trying to show you that he's interested. So that wasn't in the research, but we could send them a research question and see if they could back it up again. Good question. Um, the head tilt is the second aspect of going deeper. So if I were to ask you, do you hear that? Most people will go, and they tilt their head to the side. It's a nonverbal cue that we do. We tilt our ear up to try to hear something. When you're in conversation, you'll notice that when people are very engaged, they will tilt their head to the side and thoughtfully listen. It's a way of showing active listening. So another thing that you can do while someone, while your partner is speaking to show empathy, to show that you care, especially if you're like, this person is expressing something to me that's very important to them. I want to show them that I believe them and I care. One way you can do this is by tilting your head to show that empathy as opposed to saying, oh, yes, I agree. That's the way you can, say, you can tell them that without having to interrupt. So show empathy and engagement. 